Now that our bug porter API has authentication, we're ready for our first deployment. And of course, our bug porter API runs on Azure functions, so we're going to deploy to Azure. And as always, we have a sprint set up for the work that we're going to do. So first, we're going to head over to the Azure portal and create a functions app that's going to run and host our application. Then we're going to build and deploy our bug porter API Azure function to our function app in Azure. And lastly, we'll do some configuration on that function app so that our bug porter API has everything it needs to actually work. So let's start this sprint. We'll just use the defaults as always and start. So let's move over this first issue that we're going to take on. We're going to head over to the Azure portal and create the function app that's going to host our bug porter API. So let's go to the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. And let me go ahead and sign in. And let's head over to the function app section. So in the top left, let's click this hamburger menu and go to function app. And let's go ahead and create a function app by clicking create function app. Our entire bug porter stack is likely going to use multiple Azure resources. So let's group all these resources together in a dedicated bug porter resource group. Let's create a new resource group and we'll name ours bug porter. We're going to name our function app bug porter dash API. We're not using Docker. We're just going to publish this from code. Our runtime is of course .NET. We're using .NET 6. We'll just leave this default region of central US. I've been developing on Windows, so I'm going to stick with using a Windows operating system to host this. And of course, we're going to use the consumption plan. So the consumption plan is a pay as you go plan, pay for what you use, probably the most reasonable option for our application. And I think the first million requests are free per month, so shouldn't be any cost for us, I assume. The downside of consumption plan is that we typically have to deal with cold starts, but we'll save that topic for another day. So let's move forward to hosting. Function apps, or at least most types of function apps, such as HTTP functions, which we have, require a storage account. So let's create a new storage account. We'll name this bug porter dash API dash storage. Whoops, can't use dashes. Let's remove those bug porter API storage, just one word. Let's move forward to networking. Nothing to configure here. Application insights, yes. This will allow us to have some observability into our function app. So for example, we can track logs and requests that our users are making and also help us track any errors in our application. We'll just use the default name here. Let's move forward to deployment. Not going to set up continuous deployment now, but definitely something I want to set up down the road because I don't want to have to manually deploy every time. So let's go to tags. Nothing I want to do here. So let's go to review and create and create our function app. There we go. We created our function app. Let's go to our function app. So click go to resource and we can see our function is running. It is live. It's just not hosting our actual bug porter API yet, but we've set up our Azure resource to eventually host our Azure function. So let's close out the story for that and get into the fun part of actually deploying our Azure functions project. So various different deployment options for Azure functions and there's actually so many different options that it's a bit confusing to choose an option. But the option that I've had the best experience with in the past, and the one that I found the easiest, is zip deployment. So the way this works is we build our Azure function in release mode, and then we take that build, which is located in our bin folder, and zip it into a compressed folder. And then we use the Azure CLI to deploy that zip to our Azure function app instance. So if we select show all files, this option in Solution Explorer, we'll see our bin and we can see the build for our bug porter API. So let's do a clean on our project so that we get a fresh bin. We also want to build for release. So let's change this build mode to release and let's select our project and build. And now if we dig into our bin and go into the release subfolder net 6.0, so that's the .NET version that we're using. Let's open that. And that contains our release build. And the structure of this net 6.0 folder matches the structure that Azure Functions wants. So we have a bin subfolder. We have a subfolder for each of our function names. So here we have a folder for our one function, the report bug function. And opening this up, it has a function.json. That's what Azure Functions wants. And finally, at the root, we have a host.json. So build looks good. Let's zip up this build folder for deployment. So let's open up this net 6.0 which is the framework version of our build in a file explorer. So let's choose open folder in file explorer and let's select everything in this folder. So everything in the net 6.0 folder again, 
So we can do a control A and let's send this to a compressed zip folder. So start that. And there we go. We got our bugporter.api zipped up folder. And right now that lives in our net 6.0 folder. Now that we have our zipped up build, we're ready to use the Azure CLI to deploy this zip to our Azure Functions app instance. So let's open up this net 6.0 folder in whatever your favorite terminal is. So I'm gonna copy this path and move back over to Visual Studio, open up a terminal in here. And I'm gonna to go to that directory that has my zipped Azure function. So let's do an ls, make sure that zip is here. Yes, it is, bugporter.api.zip. Let's do an az function app, deployment, source. We're doing a zip deploy, so a config dash zip. And now we need to point to our zip file. So we do a dash dash source, and then the path to bugporter.api.zip, which is just in this directory, bugporter.api.zip. We also need to pass some Azure parameters as well, so that it knows which function app to deploy to. So we're gonna have to pass in our resource group, which is bugporter, to this command that we're executing, as well as the function name, which is bugporter-api. So specifying the resource group with a dash G, our resource group is just called bug porter and our function name a dash n for bug porter dash api let me actually copy this command and i'll leave this in the description so that you can copy it easily and execute it yourself if you're following along but here we go let's deploy oh looks like it's starting and there we go deployment succeeded let's check it out in azure so in our function app let's go look at functions and we should see our function I do not. Oh, there we go. Just popped up. I guess it takes some time. Anyways, our function app likely failed to even start since we depend on some secret keys to connect to external services. So our bug porter API needs a Firebase service account in order to connect to our Firebase project on startup. So without this, I'm pretty sure our function app fails to even start. We probably got an error on startup. And at runtime, we need a GitHub token so that we can create GitHub issues in our repository with our GitHub account. So we need to define all of these configuration values in the Azure portal for our function app. So let's go into configuration and let's start adding application settings. So we'll start with the easy ones, the GitHub repository owner, paste that key in here. And the value is singleton Sean. Let's add that. And another setting for GitHub repository name. Let's add that key. And ours is bug porter. Let's submit that. We also need a GitHub token. So let's add a key for that. And you might have to generate a new token if yours expired. So let's add that GitHub token. And the last setting, the Firebase config. And I'm not just gonna copy in the value from our local.settings.json because the Azure portal for Azure functions can straight up just accept plain old JSON here. So we don't have to use this value that escapes all of the quotation marks. On that note, let's generate a new Firebase service account so that we can copy over that raw JSON. So let's go to the Firebase console real quick. So Firebase console and select bug porter. And let's go to this gear, go to project settings. Let's go to service accounts and we'll just download a new service account. So generate a new private key. There we go, downloaded. Let's open this up. I'm just going to open it in the browser and let's copy all this. So copy, then move back over to Azure, the Azure portal and paste that in. And that's all we got to do. So we can add this. Don't need to convert this into anything else. Can just paste in the raw JSON. So let's submit. And that should be all the configuration values that we needed to add. So let's save this configuration and that'll restart our Azure function and pull in these new values. So it should work when we go to test it out. All right, restart finished. Let's copy the URL to our Azure function so that we can actually hit it from Postman. So let me open up Postman here. And let's start by just duplicating this request that we typically make to localhost. So we'll duplicate this. And instead of making this request to localhost, we're gonna make it to our live Azure function. So let me not send up the authorization header and we'll change this bug summary to test deployment and description to deployment succeeded. So again, not sending up an authorization header. Let's try this out. Hopefully we get a 401 and not like a 500 or something. 
there we go 401 unauthorized which is good as we expected because we didn't send up any authorization header so now let's use the google api that we used last time when we set up authentication to create a new firebase user and we'll get back a token that we can pass to our azure function so i'm going to sign up a new user and set return secure token as true so that we get an id token a firebase token that we can pass to our azure function to authenticate so let me sign up i'll leave a link to these google api endpoints in the description as well as the sign in one if you already have an account but let me copy this id token that we got from signing up a new user so let's copy that and move back over to our request to our production azure function and let's replace this authorization header with bear and then paste in our new firebase token that we just got from authenticating and now let's make this request should be successful there we go 200 we get our created bug back let's go to our github repository so bug porter let's go to issues and boom there we go test deployment deployment succeeded that's the bug that we wanted to create not even a bug because everything worked our deployment was successful and we hit our live azure function to report a bug in our repository so as we recall when we were setting up this function app in azure we also set up application insights so we should be able to track some of those things that we logged in our azure function such as the user id of the user that executed the function i think we logged that as well as the id of the github issue that we created so in our function app let's go to scroll down here logs and let's just do a search for traces and run this query and we should find some cool stuff in here could probably write a better query i'll be honest i haven't done much with application insights yet but it is something that i want to get more intimate with so let's scroll through here and look at these messages and here we go this is what we're looking for so we executed that report bug function then finished executing so i believe this is when we got the 401 status code but then we execute it again and here we got all these cool logs so we got our user id logged we logged creating github issue and then we successfully created with a issue id of four and then we just finished executing so we get insights on who executed the function and the github issue that they created so i am a big fan of observability and logging so we might get more in depth with application insights later anyways back to the board we've successfully deployed our azure functions project and we tested it out that was more straightforward than i expected good job azure for making this easy let's complete our sprint hooray complete sprint and just like that deployment complete so just to summarize we went into the azure portal and created a new function app instance to host our bug porter api then we went back to our project and built our bug porter api azure function in release mode then we zipped up that build and use the Azure CLI to deploy our zipped Azure function to our Azure function app instance. Then we had to add application settings for our function app in the Azure portal so that our bug porter API could connect to external dependencies such as Firebase and our GitHub repository to report bugs. And finally, we tested our live bug porter API via Postman. We were able to report a bug and we even confirmed an application insights that we were logging all the information that we wanted. So overall, hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own application to host a production Azure function in Azure.